Okay, welcome back everyone, I got to work on our Motsi Shabbos Marathon as we are starting the new Mishnah on Daf Lamed in Mesechtas Bavakama. What do you want to ask, Aaron? Rabbi, uh, a thief breaks into your house, slips on a banana peel, and then he sues you. Do we hold by that? No. It, we, we don't. No, we don't because, because he had no right to be in your house. Even if, even, if, even if you hold that the case of, of is Barber Rishusai, that's only if you dug a bar in your Rishus and then you were mafka the area around the bar. So then people had the right to come in. But if they don't have the right to come in and they fell in a manhole on your property, you're not chayef. Yeah. So what do we do with the Dina the Mahfusa Dina, where they will find you guilty? Uh, so Dina and Malchus Dina, that's another whole discussion which we're going to learn about in other sugyas. That's not for now. But suffice it to say, if it's you, you're chayef. Now, um, yeah. <laughs> now, now um, we are two lines from the top of Daf Lamed Amid Aleph. It's wonderful to have uh, 27 Zoomers with us on the Matzah Shabbos. Uh, and uh, uh, we are uh, we uh, start the new Mishnah. Mayim If Marshall spills water into the Rishus Rabbim, the Huzik Ben Achar, and somebody else gets damaged on it, Chayiv Beniskai. He's Chayiv in damages. Now, we're going to see in the Gemara that this could be even in the event that Marshall had permission to do it. There are certain times that you could open up your uh, pipes and let the uh, water flow into the Rishas Rab, namely, namely, however, if somebody, you do it at your own risk, and if somebody gets damaged, you're going to be chayiv. Um, so anyway, as we welcome in Mordechai Yemansky, for our 28th Zoomer of the evening. Now, this was seemed to be a... Um, uh, there was a problem of waste disposal with thorns and, thorns and glass. So if somebody secreted uh, a thorn or glass into a wall and then the wall fell down, or as or he made his fence with thorns sticking out into the Rishus Arabim. Vigedel should not Rishus Arabim and a wall that fell into the Rishus Arabim. Vohuzik bam achayrim and other people get damaged on it. Chayiv beniskan. Marshal is chayiv. So now the Gemara is going to uh, qualify these cases. Amarav, when somebody gets damaged with the water that Marshall is pouring out, it's talking about where the person's clothing got dirty with the water, and it has to be talking about where it was the person's clothing got dirty while he was throwing the water, because otherwise, uh, if, it, if the water was there as a obstacle, he wouldn't be high if, for the clothing, because Bar is not chayiv on Caleb. So it means that it got damaged while he was uh, releasing the water. Avalhu atzmai potter. But if somebody slips on the water and falls on the ground, uh, Marshall is going to be potter because the man banged himself on the ground of the Rishas Arabim, not on his water, because karka ilam is ikta. It was only the ground in the public uh, property that damaged him. Wait a minute. Marshall's water got mixed up with the ground and made mud. And therefore, it's, since it's mixed with Marshall's water, and the Gemara assumes that Marshall wanted that, so then it is Marshall's. It should only be like 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 uh, his mud, right? Says the Gemara, me suffered the late Tomu Maya. Do you think that the water was still in existence? But it Tomu Maya. It's talking about where the water uh, got absorbed. 
So therefore, it's not talking about where the person tripped on the water, but it's talking about when Marsha released the water, the water ruined somebody's clothing. So the Gemara says, so Vitarte Lomeli, why does it have to teach us this? We already learned uh, that if somebody's uh, pitcher broke and somebody uh, uh, got his suit stained with the water, uh, you're why, 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 why do you have to learn two cases about this? So the Gemara says, it's coming to tell you one in the summer where Marshall had no permission, and one is the winter, so even though he had permission to open his pipes and release the water, uh, it's, still, it's still, if it damages, he's kind. Opening up your pipes, and cleaning out your sewers, and putting it into the Rishus Sarabim, in the summer, ain't lehem rishus. But in the winter, yeish lehem rishus. In the winter, you have permission. But even if you have permission, still, it's do it at your own risk. In his eku, if it damages, chayovim l'shalem. You have to pay. Now, hamatznia es hakaitz. So, remember, we, we're going to repeat now about the wall that Marshall had with thorns. And we said if somebody gets damaged on those thorns that are jutting out, Marshall is chayv. So I'm a Rabbi Yechanan, and do we have, by the way, a stenographer keeping, uh, you know, good uh, records about how much Marshall owes? I'm a Rabbi Yechanan. Uh, I'm a Rabbi Yechanan. Uh, our Shimon is keeping an account. Okay. He has a glint in his eye. He doesn't take credit cards. Only certified checks. I'm Rabbi Yechanan. Uh, Marshall says he takes even bank checks. Um, I'm Rabbi Yechanan. Don't worry about the check. Now, I'm Rabbi Yechanan. That's only if the thorns are sticking, protruding into the Rishon Zerab. I'm saying, but if the thorns are level with the wall, loy. Says the Gemara, my timer, my timer potter. So we already explained this. I'm Rav Achbarei Ravika. Lefi shein darken shol bnei adam lishachech b'ksalim. It's not the way of people to rub against the wall. They don't do that. Animals do that. Tan Rabbanah. Hamatznia koytzoisav uzichichoisav lisech koysel shol chaveira. If Marshall, in his waste efforts, his disposal efforts, puts his thorns and his glass in someone's wall. And the owner of the wall, that's uh, uh, Dr. Guy, the owner of the wall comes, he dismantles the wall, and it falls into the Rishus Arabim, and the thorn and the glass hurt somebody. Chayiv amatznia. Don't be surprised. But Marshall is chayiv. Not Dr. Guy. Marshall is chayiv. So the Gemara says, qualifying this. That's only a rickety wall. Ah, look what's going on. Just like this, we have 31 Zoomers. That was, that was that was unbelievable. Marshall's just up to a little mischief, and all of a sudden, half the world is coming. As we to hear about that stuff, I'm picking up on the street. I'm telling you. As I'm we as we welcome in Mo Kushner and Harrison Kletzel and Nacho Zevis, uh, and uh, great to have everybody joining us here on uh, our Motzi Shabbos marathon. Loishanuel of Kaiser that's only if it was a rickety wall. So it was a rickety wall. Marshall should have known that the wall was destined to be dismantled and therefore uh, he, he, he shouldn't have put it there. Avobekaisalbari, but if it was a healthy wall, then Amatsnia Potter, Marshall who put it there was Potter Vichayev Balakaisal, Dr. Guy is Chayev, because he should have 
before taking down the wall, he should have checked if anybody put anything in it, and he should have taken out the thorns and the glass. I'm Ravina. So Ravina says, you know, we could extrapolate from this an interesting din. If Marshall covers his pit with Dr. Guy's lid, and the owner of the lid takes back his lid, Marshall is high because he should have ascertained that Dr. Guy is going to need his lid back. So the Gemara says, Pshita, well, isn't that obvious? Says the Gemara, Maud the same, a horsem who, in the case of the rickety wall, it's because the loyavi yodele deloide, because he didn't know someone to inform. Aval hacha, but over here we're assuming that Marshall took back the guy's lid. It went. Uh, we would and 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 that that Dr. Guy knows Marshall. Aval hacha di yodele. I might think that there's an obligation of Dr. Guy before he takes the lid back to inform Marshall that he's taking it back. Kamash Malan. We don't say that. Very interesting the way the liability is, is put over here. I think I wanted to say that Dr. Guy should have known not to take the lid, uh, excuse me, that Mar- uh, it's partial that Marshall should have known that Dr. Guy is going to need his lid back, so therefore he should have filled it out. Or he should have got his own lid. Now, talking about the disposable of dangerous items, very important thing. Tan Rabbanan, chasinim arishainim, the early Hasidim Hayamatsnian Kaitseyam Vizukhyam Besaik Sadaisayam. They would bury it in their own fields where it's out of reach of hurting people. Now I the plow, they don't want the plow banging into it. Umamikin Lam Gimel Twachim, they would dig it deep down three twachim, Kade Shaloyam Akeva Makarisha shouldn't get in the way of the plow. Rav Sheish is shadulu benura. Rav Sheish would throw it in the fire. Rav is shadulu bediglas. He would throw it into the Tigris. And now here we have a, a Gemara that's quoted very often. Amr of Yehuda, Hayman de meboy lemahavi chasida. If you want to be pious, lekayim mile dinazakin. You should fulfill matters that we learn in the three bavos. Matters of torts, matters of uh, how to behave with your neighbors, right? Not to steal, uh, not to extort. Rava amamile de avais, you should fulfill perke avais. Imre la mile de brachas, you should fulfill the laws of brachas. So the Masha says over here that there isn't an argument over here, but rather there's three areas of chasidus. This chasidus to your fellow man, there's being a chasid for yourself, and then there's being a chasid to Hashem. So if you want to be a chasid to your fellow man, you learn Nezikin. If you want to be a chasid for yourself, not to be a balgaiva, not to be lazy, not to be greedy, you learn Pirkei If you want to be a chasid to Hashem and know how to make brachas and how to daven and when to say Kriyashma, then you're going to learn Mile de brachas. Okay, new Mishnah. Just getting, getting underway on a real marathon, Matzah Shabbos, for those that attended late. The plan is tonight, after this, to learn a chok. And then after the chok, to do two not-so-easy Mishnayis in, in Mishnayimis. So uh, we have an ambitious evening this evening. Um, What a way to start a week. This is what it says. 
If you start the week good, then that bodes well. And it's a very important week. A week where we head into Hanukkah. We're, we're hoping very much that Hanukkah should usher in a, a great Nitzachen for Klal Yisrael. Hamaytzi has tivnai v'kasha l'rishesarab and l'zvolen. So here, Marshall takes out his straw and his stubble into the Rishis Ram in order that it should be converted into fertilizer. Vuhuzik ben Achar, and Chatzkel is walking and gets damaged. Chayiv ben Iskay. So Marshall is Chayiv, no surprise there. Vikola koide behem zocha. And whoever wants to take the straw and stubble could help himself to it. Because if you put something, a nuisance in the Rishis Rabbim, uh, the Chachamim uh, make it free to take. Anything that does damage in the Rishis Rabbim, Veziku Chayavim Lashalim, you have to pay. The Gemara is going to want to know what's the Machloikis between Reb Shimon Gamliel and the Tanakama. And now here we have Marshall's specialty. If he overturns the dung in the Rishis Rabbim, and somebody else gets damaged on it, and we said that's talking about where he had in mind to acquire it. Right? So he picked it up, he had in mind to acquire it, so he's Chayiv in damages. Now, the Mishnah that says that Marshall puts his stuff in the Rishis Rabbim, and somebody hurts himself, he's chai of lema mastis and the like Reb Yehuda. The Tanya Reb Yehuda, I'm a b'shasa itzahas volum. When people put out uh, fertilizer, other might see zivlo lurishas rabim, he could put out his fertilizer into the public, v'tzayv rei kol shloishim yoyim, and pile it there for 30 days, k'dei she'e nishif barag le'odam abram le'behemus, so it should be trod upon by the feet of humans and the feet of animals, and become more useful, Shalmanas came, because with this uh, allowance, Hinkel Yeshua has arts. Yeshua made it as a national allowance that you could put out the fertilizer to be trod upon. So the Chayra, according to Rabbi Yehuda, uh, Marshall is lily white. Why should he be Chayif? Says Gemara, I feel the time of Rabbi Yehuda, my Rabbi Yehuda, Shem Hizik, that if somebody gets damaged, Mashalim Ashi Hizik. Says the Gemara, why? Rabbi Yehuda is of the opinion that if you do something with permission, you're Potter. Vatanan, amazing. Shvu Shechal by Hanukkah. Vatanan, Rabbi Yehuda, I'm a Bener Hanukkah Potter. If the Chenveni put out a Hanukkah Menaira, then and the flax got ignited. Uh, Rabbi Yehuda holds that the owner of the Hanukkah is Pater because he did a Bereshus. So you see that if it's Bereshus, he holds it's Pater. Memnei Shu Bereshus. Says the Gemara, my love, me Shu Bereshus Bezdin, that it's, the Bezdin allows it. Says the Gemara, loy. It means, me Shu Bereshus Mitzvah. Oh, that's different. Because it's a Mitzvah to put it there. It's not a Mitzvah to put the Zevil out. You're allowed to. Here it's a higher level. It's a mitzvah to put it there. As we welcome in Maishi from South Fallsburg, it's a long time that we haven't seen you. Very, very warm welcome to you. Did not Rabbi Yehuda Imer, B'ner Chanukah Potim, Neishu Shus Mitzvah. So now the Gemara says, Toshma kol elu she'amru mutor in l'kalko b'rishas arabim, that you're mutter to do damage in rishas arabim, meziku chayovim l'shalim, if it does damage your chayiv, Rabbi Yehuda Paiter. So you see Rabbi Yehuda exempts uh, because it's Rishus and it's not Rishus Mitzvah, it's just permission. Says the Gemara, Amar Rav Nachman, Masnisen Shaloi B'Shas Eitzah Zvalim. Our Mishnah is talking about where Marshall puts it out, not in the season when it's allowed. And therefore, Rabbi Yehuda, it could be going according to Rabbi Yehuda. Rav Ashi, Amar Rav Ashi, everybody wants to preserve that the Mishnah could still be going according to Rabbi Yehuda. Ravashi Yama, there's another way that it could still be going according to Rabbi Yehuda. Enoch Hanami, if it was fertilizer that Marshall put out and somebody hurt himself, Marshall would be potter. But here, Tivnoi the Kashetanan, he put it out while it was straw and stubble, before it became fertilizer. The allowance is to put out fertilizer. He put out straw and stubble, 
Mishum de Masauke, that's uh, the Mashrike, the that's slippery. And since that's slippery, that's why he's Chayyim. So now let's get on, get on to the fact that Mark is, sees all that expensive stuff. He comes with his U-Haul and he carts it away. Right? He's always Marshall, Mark is always passing Marshall's house to see what he did wrong now in order he could strip him of his property. So here's an interesting Shiloh. Is Mark allowed to take even the initial fertilizer? Or is he only allowed to take that which it got improved while it was in the Rishasarab and where it could cause damage? Interesting question. What did they penalize Marshall? Did they penalize him on the whole item? Or did they only penalize on the improvement while it was illegally in the Rishas Aram? I mean, we were learning illegally either because it wasn't the time of Aitzah Zavalim or it was because it was straw and stubble. So, Amara, Bain Begufan, Bain Bishvach. No, Mark could take the whole kit and caboodle. He could, he could take everything from Marsha. Not, not just the improvement, but all of the straw and stubble. Um, while Ziri Aimer, Ziri says Bishvachan, he could only take the improvement while it was there illegally in the Rishi Sarabim, Avaloi Gufan, but not, not the actual straw and stubble. Obviously, but my Kamifligi, what are they arguing about? Rav Savar Kansu Gufa Mishim Shvachan, that we can't send the principle because of the improvement. We don't penalize the principle because of the improvement. Tanan. So here Marshall overturns the dung in the Rishas Rabban. And somebody hurts himself. So Marshall is responsible. The ilu kala koidim zaka loikitani. So the Gemara wants to assume why? Because by the dung there is no improvement. So the Gemara says, no. It said kala koidim zaka on the whole Mishnah. Tunnel erase of a word in the sefer. Says the Gemara about tani ala asura mishum gezel. It's forbidden to take the dung. Says you might know it means that when Mark comes and takes it, you can't take it away from Mark. It's referring to Mark that took it. He says he doesn't say that. If he takes out his straw and stubble to Rishas Ram, and somebody else gets damaged, and Mark could take it whenever he wants, and there's no problem of stealing, and somebody gets damaged, so the Gemara says, now, first of all, what does that mean? What does that mean that you could take it uh, what does it mean that if you overturn the dung and somebody else gets damaged, also be Shem Why should that be also? Says the Gemara, yeah, you know why? Because dung doesn't have any improvement. So since dung doesn't have any improvement and it never improved in the Rishas Rabbim, we don't allow people to take it. If there is an improvement, like by the straw and stubble, they penalized the principle because of the improvement. But dung that doesn't improve, it's already fertilizer. There there's no class at all. So now here's an interesting question. Marshall puts straw and stubble in the Rishasarab. 
Mark sees it, and he wants to take it. Uh, you know, he calls himself a friend. You know, Mark sees it, and he wants to take it. It didn't improve yet. Can he, do we say, Konsu Gufa Yatu Shvach, even before it improved? <laughs> Ibayalo. It's really an interesting shayla. Ibayalo. Ledivrei ha'aymer kansu gufa mishum shvachan. According to the opinion that says that since he's allowed to take the improvement, we penalize even the principal because of the improvement. La'alter kansinan. Can Mark take it right away even before it improved? It was there long enough to improve? Or he could only take the principle after there was improvement while it was left illegally there in the Rosh Hashanah. So the Gemara says, Tajma arinan galal. This is a very interesting uh, proof. Since we ask from the dung on Rav, so that means that Rav holds that we can sin even before it improves. Because otherwise, what are you asking from dung? Dung doesn't improve. Says in Gemara, so it must be that Rav holds that we take away the straw and stubble before it even improves. That's why we make a, com- a comparison to the dung at all. Says in Gemara, now, when we brought the question from the gull, that's before we made the chilek. Between that which, that which uh, improves and that which doesn't, the tizber ki arinan galol mikame delishne Rav Nachman. It's only before Rav Nachman made the chiluk that we only consent with is an improvement. The boss of the shani Rav Nachman me kalamir me gol. No, when nobody compares dung because over there there's no gol call. There's no comparison. So now the Gemara. As we welcome in Richard Rosenzweig, good to work to you, and uh, we are uh, well on our way over here, Richard. We're on the Flamid Amid Bays, and we are seven lines above the wide lines on the Flamid Amid Bays, just getting uh, started on what is hopefully a chok night as well. Um, I keep on pumping myself up for it. <laughs> Pumping myself up. Uh, uh, look We're at waiting, no problem. What? We're waiting. No yeah, problem. Yeah, you, you, Marshall says he's up to it. Good. Good. I'm lucky to have such Talmudim. Um, so now the Gemara wants to bring a proof, discuss about whether we kind of shaggy got to make uh, uh, the shvach because uh, we were kind of the, the principle because of the shvach. And we're going to compare it to ribbis. Lame ketanai. Shtar shekosov by ribbis. Here, um, Chatzkel is taking a loan with interest. Kain tzinaisai. So, we penalize the one who gave the loan. Ve'en agay v'loyes ha'keren v'loyes ribbis. And we don't allow him to collect even the principal. Forget about the, the interest. Divra Meir. The Chachamim Aymim Goi Vesakar. No, you can collect the principal. Avalei Esaribis. So Lema Rav Domek Reb Meir. Must be that Rav holds like Reb Meir that we're kindness even uh, the principal. So we're kindness the Karen because of the uh, Shvach. Uziri Domek Reb Says Gemara, no. I could hold even according to Rabbanan. You know why the Rabbanan don't cancel the principal by a debt with ribbis? The principal is allowed. There's nothing wrong with taking, giving, giving a loan of principal. Aval but here, when Marshall put out the straw and the stubble, the straw and the stubble itself did damage. Karen Gufa Kamazik, the straw and the stubble itself did damage. 
Viziri Amalach Ziri says, I know that I feel a mayor. I could hold even according to a mayor that uh, although over here I hold that we don't cancel the principle, I understand why he cancels the principle over there by ribbis. I can't like come around Mayor Hossam El the Mishask Siva the other Lay Shuma. Because as soon as they write the document, he's over like semen all of Nashik, which means that you're not allowed to evaluate interest on the loan. So there it's a forbidden act. The entire act is a forbidden act. Avalhacha, but over here, we don't know if anybody will get damaged with his stuff. At the end, maybe nobody will be damaged. Me Yamer Damazik. Now, even though it, it's not you're not allowed to do it, but if at the end nobody hurt themselves, so he didn't do an actual Avera. But over here, drawing up the loan with interest, the whole thing is an act of an Avera. So now the Gemara says, Lema Kahani Tanoi. Hamaitzi Tivnoi Vikashal Rishasaram Lizvalim. Marshall puts out his straw, a stubble to Rishas Rabbim for fertilizer. Mozik ben Achar, and Chatzkel hurts himself, Chayiv ben Iskai, he's Chayiv in the damages, with Kol HaKoyde ben Zocha, and whoever wants could take it, Mark could come with his, you all and take it, Vasur Mishim Gezim, but it's forbidden to steal. Rabbi Shimei Gamliel, I'm going to call him a Kalkim Rishas Rabbim, Ezekiel, Chayiv ben Lashalim, Marshall has to pay, so the Gemara says, wait a second. The Tanakhama is an internal contradiction. He says Mark can take it, but it's also for Gezel. Which one is it? Can Mark take it, or is it forbidden with Gezel? El it must be. means Mark could take the improvement that it improved in the Rishas when it was illegally there. Vasur Mishim Gezel means the principal uh, straw and stubble he has to give back to Marshall. Uh, uh, and Vasur Mishim Gezel, that's going agufan on the principal. Vasur Mishim Gamlil, Afilu Gufan Nami. Even the principal itself, Mark can take. Kol Bem so the Gemara says, Zairi, according to Zairi, who says that we don't cancel the, the principle, so vadai tanoi. So this is taka, definitely the machloik is between the Tanakama and uh, Rav Shimon Gamliel. The Tanakama says that you can't take the principle. The principle is also Mishim Gezel. And Rav Shimon Gamliel holds that you're allowed to take the principle. Lorav mi lema tanoi. According to Rav, are we going to say it's a machloikis tanoim? Amalach Rav, no. Everybody holds that Mark should be able to take the principle because with kindness, the principle ought to be shvach. The kuli alma konsu gufa mishim shvachan. However, the question is whether when, when the Tanakhama says asur mishim gezel, that's because he holds that Although this is the halacha, we don't instruct it the rabbi. The halacha, the halacha, the ein moirin kamif kain kamifli. Here they're arguing whether we say it's the law, but we don't instruct it. That's the law, but we don't instruct Mark to take even the principle. The ema rav hu na ama rav halacha the ein moirin kain. It's the halacha, but we don't instruct people to do it. It is the halacha, and we do instruct people to do it.